Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this privilege to gather in your presence. But that's our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because you have never left us without your word. Lord, we thank you for your word that you have even released this morning. Father, we ask that you will give us deep understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. God, let your word come this morning with power. Let your word come this morning with precision. And let it meet us at our point of need and turn our lives around permanently in the name of Jesus. We will not recover from this. We are going to move from grace to grace, from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I really say this church. Uh, anybody that is younger than uh, our Geo is, 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 is uh, declared a youth. Praise the Lord. So we are young in Jesus' name. I want to thank the pastorate for this opportunity to stand before the people of God and thank God most of us, especially. And I ask that uh, this morning you will guide us Amen. and you will speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. This morning we are talking about um, the perfect community. I think the uh, topic of the day is not new, praise the Lord. Throughout the week, we have had the definition of Jubilee. Amen. So I, I don't think we can say we do not know what uh, Jubilee is all about. But then again, I will still say that uh, Jubilee can be described in Bible terms as um, the year of emancipation. Amen. Praise the Lord. The year of emancipation, a year of restoration. Praise the living Jesus. And also a year of new beginnings. Praise the Lord. When we say emancipation, you know, we are talking about freedom. Praise the Lord. We are talking about freedom. He has come to set us free. Praise the Lord. Free to serve Him, free to worship Him, and free to be who He has called us to be. Um, this morning we'll be looking at Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1. No, I'll just touch some scriptures, but basically we are still from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 25, from verse 1. And from verse 1 says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. So from verse 1, we are just going to just point out something that God said. He said, in, in summary, it says, God spoke to Moses, saying, Praise the Lord. So whichever um, translation we are looking at, the basic point there is that God spoke eh? and what did he say? Praise the Lord. Now before we move into the um, what he actually said, we need to look at the, the relevance, the importance and the efficacy of the word of God. The power in the word of God. Why is it important for us to note that it was God that spoke? In, if we look at Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that God created the heavens and the earth. You know, a summary, I'm just summarizing from 1 to 3. It says the earth was without form. The Bible says it was void, and darkness covered the face of the earth. Praise the Lord. When we say something was void, it had no shape, it had no meaning, it had no form, it had no, no beauty, it had no impact, it had no meaning. Praise the living Jesus. So the earth was shapeless, it was without it, it was not something to, that we would celebrate. Praise the Lord. The earth was in darkness, and the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord brewed upon the waters. Then it said, and God said, let there be light. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It is only God that can call light out of darkness. You know, for, for, for those of us that are in one form of science or the other, you know that before you want to make something, you need, before you create something or you make something, you need certain properties of that thing eh, in other materials that you combine together. So you extract what you need from those things and you make a new thing. Praise the living Jesus. But it's only God that can call fire. He wanted to, you know, when Elijah wanted to call fire from heaven, they started by instead of pouring fuel on the sacrifice, they poured water. And that who says the fire came and it lit up the water. Hallelujah. Like fuel. Praise the living Jesus. Yeah. It's only God that can look at a life that does not look like it. 
It's only God that can look like look at a marriage that does not look like it. That does that that, that 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 can look at a person that does not look like this one is going to amount to anything and call glory out of it and call light out of it. Praise the living Jesus. So I'm just talking about the word of God. And when God speaks, eh, we, 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 we take we pay attention because there is life. There is power, there is authority in His word. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. And nothing can can go against the word of God. Nothing can contradict the word of God. If God says that this, if this is white and God says it is black, because He spoke it, it becomes black. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Even if we are saying it's white, praise the living Jesus. So I just to understand the God that is speaking here. So that is why we went to Genesis chapter 1 that showed us the state of the world and because he spoke even the world you and I have not recovered from it praise the living Jesus that he says that light and darkness day and night shall continue has it not continued? Yes, praise the living Jesus praise the living Jesus so there is power in his word. So that is the person is speaking here now. Now we we'll go back to Leviticus chapter twenty-five. It says that the word that um, and Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, "What did he say?" So we look at um, verse verse ten, verse ten, Leviticus chapter twenty-five, from verse ten. He says, "And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land." upon all the inhabitants thereof this is the word of god and he's giving certain instruction in here and he says listen this this and we well, said okay and proclaim liberty throughout all the land where is he proclaiming liberty all the land does it include nigeria yes, does it include the Pokutu? does it include 180 degrees all the land praise the living jesus said, and unto all the inhabitants thereof so it's not just self proclaim this unto all the land but most importantly unto the inhabitants of this land so god is saying see said proclaim me in battle. this is the person that said let there be light eh? and there was light even darkness could not could not, uh, could not even handle it, could not stay. It had to become light. Praise the Lord. And it says, It shall be a jubilee unto you in the name of Jesus. It says, Declare unto the land, it says, and the people of 180 degrees, it says, This year shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return every man unto his possession. And ye shall return every man unto his family praise the lord Hallelujah. all that is due to you that has been denied you before he says it shall be restored unto you in the name of jesus Amen. so that is verse 10 talking about proclaim liberty throughout all the land verse 11 says verse 11 says a jubilee shall okay he has he has declared the jubilee praise the lord the seven says a jubilee shall be the fifth year to be to be unto you. Okay, the fiftieth year, sorry, to be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth in it, neither reap that which is which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in its vine um, in thy vine under press. So basically, the summary of what we want to pick here from verse 11 is saying that, see, he has declared Jubilee this year as a year of Jubilee unto you. Praise the Lord. But he is saying that, see, it's not because you are able to repair so. Not because you are able to plant. Not because you are able to plan. Not because of you are a hard worker. Not because of you stay up and says it's in vain that you, you sleep late and wake up early in vain. Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Now, instead of that, see, this year of Jubilee is not because of you have worked for it. It's not even because you deserve it. Praise the living Jesus. 
praise the living Jesus. Now verse 12 says, For it, for it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. It says, Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Praise the Lord. The stuff is saying that, see, the word of the Lord is coming this morning. He's saying that you, you, yeah, when he says yeah, he's talking about you. Saying you shall eat the increase of the field. Praise the Lord. The devil told us that not because you worked for it. Amen. Not because of your plan, you labor, you got it right. Not because of you have done what you are supposed to do. They said, the Bible already says that, see, he that does not walk should not what? Praise the Lord. He, see, God is a God of principles. Amen. He says that, see, he that does not walk should not what? Eat. But he said there is a season. There is a time when he has set forth his word of liberation, his word of increase, his word of life. He says, this has nothing to do with you, whether you labor or not. He said, because I, the Lord, have spoken it, or have said it, so shall it be. Praise the living Jesus. So this year of jubilee that he's talking about, he says, see, you are going to experience jubilee, not because you labor for it, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 13, I jump to verse 13. Verse 13 now says, in the year of jubilee, Ye shall return every man unto his possession. What God has kept for you, no matter how it has been delayed, no matter even if you yourself are taking it and has left it in the camp of the enemy, no matter whether you have given away your bad rights, the way Esau gave his bad rights for a plate of porridge, whatever it is you have, you have received and given things of value away, he said that. All those things shall be returned unto you because this is the year of Jubilee. Amen. This is the year of Jubilee. Amen. And so shall it be for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lastly, in verse 17, verse 17, it says, Ye shall not therefore oppress one another. It says, But thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Remember, we start by establishing who is speaking here. We start by looking at the efficacy of the word that is being said. And the word that is coming is coming from the one that is what cannot return to him without fulfilling the purpose of it that has gone forth. The one that is what is yea and is amen. The one that is the alpha and the omega. And he's saying to you this morning, he's saying to us, he's saying to me, he says, this is your year of jubilee. He's saying that in this year of jubilee, that you will reap the fruit of the land. You will enjoy the fruit of the land. And there shall be no more oppression in the name of Jesus. He's also saying that whatever it is we have lost, that those things shall be given back to us in the name of Jesus. That is the season that we find ourselves. You know, we can begin to now look at the season. They say it is um, the 50th year, there are rules, there are things that um, govern it. I want us to go to the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. Matthew 5, verse 1 to 4. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 1 to 4. It talks about another season. It says, after this, um, okay, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and the Jews went up to Jerusalem. Verse 2, And now in Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, in Hebrew tongue, Bethsheda, having five porches. says, Now in this lay a great multitude of impotent folks, of blind, of them that are withered, of, you know, um, those that cannot move, lame, all kinds of people. There's waiting for the moving of the water. Now, the key word is that they are waiting for the moving of the water. What is so important about this moving of the water? In verse 4, it says, For an angel went at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whoever is the first to enter the water is made old of whatsoever disease he or she has. Praise the Lord. So, this is talking about another season, you know, just like 
we said that the Jubilee is actually a season. Amen. So here, he's talking about another season. And there's a pool in Israel. There used to be. And that, you know, at a certain season, at a certain time, it's an allocated time when an angel goes and stirs that water. Now, when the angel stirs that water, it troubles the water, it stirs the water. The people, all, whatever, those that have all kinds of sicknesses, they stay and wait. That, okay, once is that season, once the angel stirs the water, what happens? The first to enter it, eh? Is healed of whatever sickness he has. So we now have a man that has been there, that was says for 38 years. Praise the Lord. So each year he goes, waiting that, okay, ah, once it's time, maybe I'll try and roll into the water. Before he rolls, one, two, somebody has already jumped inside the water. Praise the Lord. So this is what we call in science, we call it a struggle of the fittest. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who all struggle, the best will win. The person that's able to get him first will win. So, if, and once that has done, he will wait until the next season. And the next season now, we do not know if it is yearly, if it is every two years, if it is every three years. So once that opportunity passes, he has to wait until the next opportunity again. Praise the living Jesus. So this man was there every year for 38 years. But in verse, uh, verse 8, before verse 8 anyway, what happened? He met with the word of God. Praise the living Jesus. And because Jesus, the word of God, that says in the beginning was the word, praise the Lord, says that the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So the word of God, that same word that came and said, let there be light, that same word that came and said, this is the year of Jubilee, that same word that told the angel that at this season you go and stir that water, that word came in person. The Bible says, and dwelt among us. And the word walked up to the man and he asked him, what do you want? Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. And after an interaction with the man, man was explaining that ah, I do not qualify. Hey, uh, they say it's five credits, and uh, me, I, I, I don't have master in English. Uh, they say, uh, in fact, I'm looking for a job. Uh, I, they say they, they, they want 24 years old. Eh, that I've gone NYC, which actually still on strike. Since I mean, I don't know how long they actually have been on strike, you know. But they will tell us that ah, they want a job. Uh, we have a job for you. Entry level, 24 years old, and you must have finished NYC. You must have had this one, that one, that one, you know. Then you will not come and now apply for that job. So you can get the experience that you want to get, what you want to become in life. Then by the time you, you, you actually get all those things, what well, happened? You have entered 30. Praise the living Jesus. Now they say, okay, ah, if we want 24 years old, your age has passed. Okay, the job that, that, is, that matches your age, they say you don't qualify, you don't have the experience. So the man was explaining to Jesus, I, I don't know how to pay my school fees. I'm not, I'm not sharp. I'm not smart. I don't know how to talk. The, the, the man of God that spoke this morning, those of us who are in first service, he said he, he said he was not among the smart people. They didn't consider him smart. When the word, whatever it is, you know, Jeremiah said, I'm a judge. Moses said, I, I stammer. I don't know how to talk. I'm not those smooth talkers. And you're sending me to go and talk with intellectuals. I don't know what the disqualification is, but that day he stood before the word of God. And in verse 8, verse 8, he says, Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. Praise the living Jesus. You have been waiting on the Lord 38 years. And that morning was his year of Jubilee because he met the word of God. And the word of God says, Take up, says, Arise. Stand up, carry your mat and walk. And his life was changed. His story never remained the same again. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, that same word of God is meeting you this morning. That same word of God has come to us this morning. That same word of God has, is speaking to us this morning. Praise the living Jesus. I don't know what has put us, what has worked against us. I was, I was somewhere yesterday, myself and my wife, and we were speaking with somebody, you know, very close to me, and the uh, person was telling me about a person, someone I knew, you know, I knew him growing up, you know, and she started telling us that, ah, actually, oh, this guy has lost all the siblings, all the siblings, and we used to know that, you know, you know it's not like now that we just give out to two children, you know that he is well with you. Those days, 
the average was from five six. Yeah. That, 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 you know, we, we have ten, we have but the thing is just normal was five six. Praise the living Jesus. If I was six from six, praise the Lord. So 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 those of us in that set, you know, we knew you know we're like family friends. Your elder brother is my elder brother's friend. You mean that my friend, my younger side, you know, we get families interact like that. So all of them are died. Remaining the elder one, God is telling me not to go and say somebody's name. It's the living Jesus. They died. And she was telling us that even there is one that remains, that it, that one, the life is as if, no, what is a living dead? You don't even know whether you are alive or whether you are dead. You don't know what you are doing with your life. Whether your career is even making sense. You know, that guy was just somewhere trying to, when the person was suffering, or other they went to come and hit the person there, and the person also died too. Praise the Lord. So remaining this guy, he married, you know, the marriage, the wife was, was, was at the office, she's working on the bank, and they said she did fraud. They accused her, they locked her up, you know, they, so case, they started running up and down and all that. Eventually, they freed her, that's okay, but he does the job. After some time, the marriage scattered. You know, the, 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 the parents of the child came to come and carry their child from there. This one, your head is not good. You know, and for like four years without wife, without you know, the father sick, all kinds of you know. Eventually, the guy, the father, brought him to stay with him. Right then, long and short of the story is that he started going to prayers, to buy. He now started going to Bible believing church to pray. I will not mention him. And one day, his father called him and said, "I know where this is coming from." Ah. That was like, what are you saying? He said, he, when. They had the first two children, they lost them. They lost the first child, they lost the second child. So the whether he lost the second child, he went to their family idol and said, please, if this third child will stay, that I will give you my family, everybody. He converted the family onto that idol. And from that, and the second, the third child actually stayed and all that. And that that was the cause of all, you know, praise the living Jesus. The boy had become a lawful captive. Praise the Lord. Not that he even knew about it. I'm just trying to point out, you know, when we say liberation, you are one, when we say liberty, when we say, when God, when God is saying, say, I will set you free, you are wondering, I'm not captive before. Even they were telling uh, 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 Jesus, the, the Pharisees, he said, he says, how can you set up? We are not, we are not in camp. We are not asleep to anybody before. We are source of, of Moses. You know, there are things we don't even know why it is we are behaving the way we are behaving. We find a young man that is we struggle with not making it. We find a lady that cannot sit down one place. So that you know what is right, but you don't find yourself doing what is wrong. Praise the living Jesus. And that was the beginning of he spun around after they started praying and said that the wife will go. The wife, they all brought back the wife, you know, and every other thing. God, God liberated the, the guy, but see what has been lost. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We have the story of Gehazi because this is a story of someone that this is just yesterday. In the Bible, we have Gehazi after he did what he did, he received that person not upon himself, but unto his children. Those children have become lawful captives. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Um, lastly, we look at um, Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. Matthew 27, 24. Matthew 27, 24. Let me just read Matthew 7, 20, Matthew 27, 24. Oh. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Matthew 27, 24. And it says, when Pilate saw they could not prevail, sorry, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather to um, commit what was made, he took water and washed his hand before the mouth to say, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See, hear to it. Then verse 25 now says, they answered all people saying, His blood be on us and on our children. 
Praise the Lord. What am I saying? The Bible says, a person that will betray the Son of Man, it is better for him not to have been born. Amen. That is what is the entitlement of the person that will betray Christ. Now they are saying, let it be unto who? Them and us their children. Them all, their children all, and become what? Lawful captives. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. We are looking at the restoration, you know. But I want to look at Isaiah 20, 49. We will end here. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verse 24. Isaiah 49, 24. Isaiah 49, 24. 24 to 26, 49. Okay. 24 says, 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 shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive be delivered? Praise the living Jesus. It's a question. I don't know what we have done. Eh? When you promise that lady that I'll see how we marry you, all this I died here, no problem. And you could now went to one of my and cut finger and go to like this. Eventually, the love went to see, we not marry again. It is well. We may have made mistakes, you know, in our years of error. Your parents may have done, your ancestors may have done something. But it says in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 20, uh, 24, it says, Shall the prey be taken from the hand of the mighty, or the lawful captive be delivered? Verse 25 says, This it says, What this said the Lord, it says, Even the Masude, the word of the Lord again, it says, this said the Lord, thus said the Lord, says, says the, the says, even the captive of the mighty shall be set free, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Says, for why? Says, for I will contend with them that contend against him. I will fight with them that fight against him. And I will save thy children. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, the word of the Lord has come forth in Jubilee. This year, or this season of Jubilee. You know, what I was trying to point out is that there was a season eh, that Jubilee was, you know, when we read Matthew, we are talking about a season when the angel came to stir the water. But when the word of God met that man, it was not the season. Amen. The, your Jubilee is when the word of God meets with you. Now, the ministry have declared a season of Jubilee, of perfect Jubilee. There is a mighty in the air. There is a, 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 there is a power at work right now. It will be a mistake if we don't key into it. Praise the Lord. The Lord has declared our Jubilee. He has declared our restoration. He has declared our freedom. But brethren, you can open the gate of a prisoner and the prisoner can say, I will sit down this side. You can open the gate of a prisoner and he may not even know that you have opened his gate. So we are, the word of God is coming this person. This is your year of jubilee. This is your year of restoration. This is your, this is your year of new beginnings in the mighty name of Jesus. When you have not reached before, you will exceed that in the name of Jesus. Those that say you will not make it, they will fall for your sake in the name of Jesus. This is my year of jubilee. Double blessing, double honor, double promotion. Set free, set loose, no glory for the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout jubilee. This is your year of jubilee. Your time is now. The set time to favor you is now. The Lord has released His word. His word that cannot fail. His word that cannot fail has come forth this morning. Who is it? Who is going to believe it? Who is going to hold upon this word? Who is going to run with it? Who is going to speak unto this word and say, Lord, so shall it be unto me? This is your time. Don't let anybody deceive you. Don't let any situation hold you back. The Lord God Almighty has spoken. Your jubilee is now. But let's begin to bow our heads and begin to speak to God. Begin to declare. Begin to declare. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. 